but they spent most of their time at a flat they rented at Wimbledon in London. This is Church Road in Wimbledon, where Carmel lived with her husband, David. She spent a lot of her time out alone shopping, and she was a familiar sight in her clogs and loose-fitting grey wool coat, browsing around the local boutiques. Hello, how are you? She was a regular customer here. I'd like to take this one, please. OK, fine. I haven't got enough money to pay for it all now. Could I leave a deposit of £5? Yes, of course. That's lovely. Only I'm going away for a couple of weeks, so perhaps my husband could come in and pay the rest later. Fine, that's great. It'll be in a bag just behind me. All Thank right? You. Thanks very much. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Have a good time. Thank bye. You. Carmel was an intelligent woman and very much a loner. She spent many hours in the local library, just reading. She suffered from the slimmer's disease, anorexia nervosa, and at the time of her death, she weighed just under five stone. She'd been receiving treatment at London's St George's Hospital. Carmel herself was a chronic anorectic. Despite the best treatment, probably about a third of anorectics stay ill for a long time, and Carmel had been battling with her illness for the best part of 15 years without success. Because she had chronic anorexia, she's in a state of chronic starvation, semi-starvation, so she would be alert, overactive and restless, she'd sleep poorly, she was often quite irritable and had difficulty relaxing. She was somebody who always wanted to get close to people but could never manage it. Last October, Carmel had gone to stay in their cottage in Rodborough near Stroud to spend a few weeks on her own. Her husband stayed at his job in London, but they'd arranged particular times when he'd phone her at the call box across the road. Hello. Fine, thanks. It's lovely down here. How's things with you? Oh, thanks very much. That's really kind of you. Bye. On Thursday, November the 9th, two days before she died, Carmel was shopping in Stroud Town Centre. Late in the afternoon, an assistant at Rumbelow's remembers her coming into the shop with a slim, middle-aged man. As the assistant started to move towards them, the man walked out. Can I help you? No, thank you. I think she liked to shop in the evenings partly because it was also a time when the day was beginning to close in and she may have been feeling lonely uh, and, uh, and a bit anxious about the evening coming, and also because it was getting darker and uh, she didn't feel so self-conscious about her appearance. She lived a life of extreme routine, everything orderly, everything in its place, and that was very important to her. It gave her a sense of control. She would only eat very uh, safe foods, foods that weren't fattening, despite being hungry a lot of the time. And she would stick to things like carrots and vegetables and what have you. I think her one self-indulgence is that she allowed herself some fruit gums at the end of a meal. And even there, she was very strict with herself. She'd only allow herself one colour, for instance, not allow herself the whole packet. She was a very self regulating individual. Saturday the 11th of November, the day of Carmel's death. As usual, it was getting towards closing time as Carmel started her shopping. At about half past four, she called in at a haberdashery shop in Stroud called So-and-So. I'd like six of these buttons, Thank please. please. Carmel always yes. came in on her own. She very rarely had uh, people with her. The only time I remember in the shop with anyone else was her husband. And I'll take this one. She Can was I never with one, other friends, you know, lady friends or anything. She always seemed very sad, quiet, no conversation. She would sometimes pay by cash, often by cheque, even small amounts she would buy okay. on cheque you know, a couple of pounds, that sort of thing. She was regular, so that was no problem. About half an hour later, she was in Boots in the High Street. Can I help you? Yes, please. Thank you. The manageress had to wait for Carmel before she could cash up. That manageress is the last person known to have seen Carmel alive. 
Police don't know exactly how she got home that evening. She may have caught a taxi from Stroud Town Centre, but it would have been more typical of her to have walked the mile back to the cottage. The next morning, a local resident saw somebody in the phone box. They remember the door was slightly ajar. 20 minutes later, a neighbour saw smoke. Someone had tried to set light to the cottage. The fire brigade found Carmel's body inside. <laughs> 